Hi guys, Nicole Lake Erie Prepper here. Uh, I wanted to go over a couple things today. That put you down here. You might not be able to see me a whole lot in this one, but hey, don't need to see my ugly mug anyways. All right, I couldn't find my paracord, so eventually it will turn up. So I went out and bought some 550. Work choice paracord with some lime greens and yellows. Uh, that's for my buddy Tech Hill Rick and for my buddy a Frog Tech with their green and yellow, as well as Sammy. Seems to be the hype these days is the green and the yellow. Hey, who doesn't like them though? Pretty colors for sure. Frog Tech. Or, yeah, Frog Tech Sanctuary. Your green and yellow, your yellow frog. I need one of those stickers. Okay. So, I also picked up Sammy Prepper Bushcraft Australia Bottle Leatherman. And in Australia, the Leatherman, Leathermans are outrageously priced. In my opinion, they're outrageously priced anyways. And you're just paying for the name Leatherman. I mean, she was going over this multi-tool, and it was, you know, a regular size multi-tool, and the reason she wanted it was because it had scissors instead of pliers inside. Now, she said that it said Leatherman on every single side of the Leatherman. Well, that's why it costs so much. You're paying for that name everywhere. So, I found out from a friend of mine the other day that you can buy a Craftsman. <clears throat> These were normally $10, but at Ace Hardware I found them on sale for $4.95. It's got snips, a knife, a hard file, a soft file, a small slotted screwdriver, and all a key ring, a Phillips screwdriver, a bottle opener, a medium slotted screwdriver, a can opener as well. So, you get a 10-in-1 mini tool. Now, the scissors on this are really good also. Of course, I don't have any paper out here, but I really just... Uh, there's some way. Let me see. All right, here we go. Some paper. Um, she took these Leathermen, and every time she went to make a snip, the paper would fold over. Like, one in four times, I think she said. This paper is crinkled, and it is cutting super nicely. Oh, that was a project I was working on. <laughs> Alright. So, Sammy, these scissors cut a nice straight line all the way through. The paper does not fold over when you go to cut. It cuts like butter. And you can sit here and do this all day when the paper is not going to fold over on you. So, these are some awesome scissors on there. Can't beat them. Craftsman. They have them in pink, black, blue, and red. Um... You know, you've got your knife. It's a small knife. It's pretty sharp, good quality. And you've got your soft file, hard file. It's got these nice little grooves in here that you can stick your finger on and they'll come right out for you. you got your all, your screwdrivers. You know, and it does it for all the tiny ones. You just stick your finger right in there and she pops right out. So, this $5 multi-tool is better than the Leatherman multi-tool, hands down. Especially when it comes to the scissors. Not to say that Leatherman's not, you know, a good steal, a good blah blah blah. But, for the price of them, when you can get a Craftsman for a tenth of the price, 
You do the math. Okay. Now. Yesterday, I went out looking for fat wood, right? You guys watched my video. Look at the size of these leaves. Isn't that outrageous? The only reason I grabbed one was because I was... <laughs> Put my sopping wet, and you can see it glistening on there, all that sap. This is a piece I pulled off that tree yesterday. It was all packed in mud, but as soon as I broke that mud up and pulled that piece of bark off, ta-da! Now I know why they call it fat wood, because when I remove this all the way around it, it looked like somebody was cut open and you could see all the fat in their body this is not hard yet it is still soft and super sticky ah it smells super good so mr rick at tack hill said light it up that's the way to find out if it's fat wood light it up so i took off a few roots you can smell that it's fat wood for sure. You can see it in there. I think that was a little knot that it gathered at. So I took off some bark. I didn't have my hatchet with me. I had my chainsaw, but it was going to storm, so I decided not to play around with it all that much. I will go out, however. Today it was raining like hell, so I didn't get a chance to go. But I'm just going to break up some of this fat woody goodiness look at that I just I'm just sticking oh. sticky 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 I even gathered up a bunch of the sap and some of the bits that look like fat just so I could bring them back and look at them and play with them see that goopy goodness that doesn't that look like that looks like fat inside of a human super icky sticky gooey 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 mess bleach and a scrub a scrubber gets that off oh great alright I don't want to touch my feral rod and stuff with this goop on my hands I'll be right back in two seconds guys So don't make my ferro rod and everything all sticky. Ah. Man, that stuff's hard to come off. And now I see why it's good to let it dry. Although I was carving into a piece of fat wood earlier, this piece right here, I was taking this gouging tool and I was going in alongside of it and it was pulling out just resiny goodness I mean it was wet inside of that dried piece of fat wood all right let's see what we can do here was showing me in a video yesterday how to make char cloth the uh, the correct way and he was also showing me how to or he was showing his nephew the best way to feather some sticks I learned look I'm grabbing it and I'm just letting the knife do the work on a corner doing it over this pan so it's not going very well. There we go. I'm letting the knife do the, do the work. There we go, a little deep. I'm 
nice curls. Alright, nice curls. So I'm gonna collect those up. Collecting up the curls. We're gonna start a fire. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Fire. So I don't know if you guys watched The Walking Dead, but I was just catching up on uh, the season finale, the one and a half hour season finale. I'm not gonna give a spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but wow, was not expecting that is all I can say. Alright, so I've got my striker and my ferro rod, my Nathan 4071 ferro rod, that was put together by Mr. Brian Lee of Cape Fear Outdoor and Survivals in the Fat Wood Emporium. Peeling a carrot. Frozen. Oh, I almost went. Oh, I almost. How am I going to do this ten times off video and it sparks right up, but I get it on camera? And it wants to dilly dally around. There we go, guys. And this is the fat wood that I collected. Look how that goes up. Oh, yeah. We like it. I might as well just save them pieces. Ooh, that is some good smelling stuff. I get all that fat. Here's a big old piece of fat. Let's wash this baby sizzle. I can pick it up here. Yeah. And there's that piece of fat. Just Look at that, just dripping off of there. Well, you know that's some good shit. <laughs> I blew it out. Where'd it go, Nicole? Anyways, there it is. There's our Fatwood project. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Being so that tree is so fresh and that the sap is, ooze, the resin is oozing out of it. Now once that sits for like a year, it's going to turn into this, right? Or when I get into the root system and the trunk and the, the stump and everything of that tree, is it going to look like this? Because from what i seen, it was pretty green like fresh wood you know so I'm assuming that stuff needs to set for a while in order to become something like this am I right or am I wrong I'm just learning here guys and I appreciate everyone's you know patience and uh, questions that I ask and really helping me to hone in on my bushcrafting skills and getting to learn, you know, I'm, I'm like a sponge. I just want to soak up all your guys' knowledge. Um, and I really do appreciate, you know, every minute that you guys spend watching my video or commenting on my link. Um, I want to learn. And I'm always about constructive criticism. 
Um, I tell the people I work with, you know, they're individuals with developmental disabilities. And I always tell them, when people are are criticizing you, it's not to put you down. It's not to make you feel like you're incompetent. It's called constructive criticism because it, it it's pointing out something you're not doing correctly or, or a different way of doing it that will essentially make you better at whatever task you're doing. And, and, it, and it's hard to get through to some of them, but for the most part, once they catch on to something, I'll go back again and I'll say, now do you remember how you felt when I told you that you should try it this way instead of the way you were doing it? And, and now how do you feel that you've actually mastered that task you know that constructive criticism was good for you correct and there it takes them a little while to catch on and understand but you know you definitely have to have patience in the field that I work in and I, and I thank you guys for having patience with me I know it can be trying and and difficult at times and sometimes you're just like like really did she just ask that or is she really trying to do it this way um, but like I said, I, I, I'm all about con constructive criticism, and, and thank you guys again. Uh, I'm going to quit rambling now. We're going on 16 minutes. It's cold out here. We're supposed to get snow tomorrow. It thunderstormed last night, and now we're supposed to get snow tomorrow. Go flip and figure. Um, anyways, bye for now. And I did take a file and flattened out my mora a little bit, so that way we can get... Evidently, I need to do it a little bit more. I only, you know, did a little bit. I think I need to definitely get it down to where it's more flat and a 90 degree. Yeah, I can still feel it's beveled. Anyways, that's it, guys. I hope you have a wonderful evening. It's about past my bedtime. Work comes early. Uh, I'm sure I'll see you guys over the weekend. So, it's bye for now. Keep on keeping on, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.